Triple M's Rush Hour podcast is brought to you by Fox Footy, only on Foxtel. Five, four, three, two, one. I see assholes like you every day. James Brayshaw. Every f- day. Billy Brownless. Is this moron number one? I don't know what I'm on. Put moron number two on the phone. He sounded like he was speaking from the TARDIS. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you two? Everybody's working. Over time. Listen to the rush hour. Triple M. I feel good. Very nice to have your company on a Thursday. Always nice to have the Rush Hour family with us. There's millions of them. They're beautiful people and they are very welcome Mm. into the Richard Marsland Studios for a couple of hours of uh, solid gold. (laughs) And let me tell you who we got coming in today, Bill. Who? Joe Silvani. Oh, yes, please. What a superstar. A wonderful young lady. We love speaking to her. She's coming in. Bernard Vince. Oh, Bernard. One of our all-time I think he is. Favorites. He's certainly in the top two or three. No in, in he comes. Yes. And then Mel McLaughlin later on in the show oh, drops by. No. She's, of course, getting ready for the Grand Prix with Channel 10. Mel McLaughlin. And she does a great job, too. So we've oh. got some television superstars and Bernard Vince jammed into the middle. Hello, Bill. Uh, g'day, Jimmy. On the first day of the Formula One Australian Rolex Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. It's all happening down there. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, great to have you aboard. Great to have the listeners. Congratulations, Jim, on your... Uh, Another three year at the North Melbourne Footy Club. Well, I appreciate that, Bill. Yeah. Uh, reappointed, if you like, uh, unopposed. So a tough election to lose. Well, okay. <laughs> but but well, having said that, it was not. Yeah, so well, we're done. looking forward to the next three years enormously. Yeah, um, um, and g'day to our listeners, and g'day to you, Big Daddy. That's right. I'm your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's he goes. Hey, Bill. <laughs> uh, we've also got some very interesting audio to play you later on. Uh, a couple of uh, the Australians, Brad Hodge and Davey Warner, speaking to Ed, Darce and Mick this morning well, on, on the, the bus. bus. Oh. After they'd won the T20. Good win, so too. We, oh, fantastic. Davey win, so. Warner just whacking them around still, mm-hmm. Jim. Oh, no, and, and Hodgie, too. And what else at, did you uh, see nearly in the paper? 50. Um, I was reading today, Bill, interesting uh, article got sent through to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think um, Robbo, the, the journalist, Her- Herald, uh, Mark Robinson. Herald, yeah. And uh, it says James Hurd and his family will embark on a four-month trip to France yes. on Friday, officially distancing the exiled coach from Essendon. Yeah. It talks about what he plans to do and where he plans to go and all the rest of it. But it's this bit here that interested me, Bill. The sentence that said, It's understood he plans to watch as many opposition teams as he can Mm -hmm. as he prepares to return to the coach's box in late August. Live streaming, Jim. Surely if you're going to watch as many opposition teams as you can, the best place to do that's the grandstand, Bill. Well, it is an interesting one if he's going to come back and coach, which we assume he's going to do. Well, that's what we hear. And he's going away for 16 weeks, which is... What two thirds? Of season, two thirds of the season, Jim. And you know yourself, the game changes every week. Week. I was going to say every couple of weeks, three weeks. So the game changes. So you would think that he would be there, taking down, looking at the strategies, how the other sides, just not Essendon, of no. course, how the other sides are well, playing. More than Essendon, I'd imagine, is yeah. the trends in the game and how. Uh, teams are starting to combat what his team's doing well. I mean, that's that's what opposition scouts spend their whole career doing. And, of course, you know what it's like watching on telly. You don't get the whole no. uh, whole game. No, and also, he's not allowed to game. talk to Bomber about no, footy. No, I understand all that. And yeah. that's, I know that's part of his band. So mm. I, I absolutely understand that side of it. And it's impossible for him to have an impact on that front. But you would have thought, Bill, if you're going to come back and take over a senior side in the AFL, yeah. you'd be wanting to spend as much time as you could watching mm. where footy's headed in the interim. Yeah, no. Pretty hard to do that from the Northern Hemisphere. Exactly. If he sat in the grandstand, though, people would be going bananas. The paparazzi would be all over him. People would just be hounding him. No, he's allowed no. to sit in the he's grandstand. He's allowed to do that. Yeah, but there would be a big likes. hoo-ha about it. Oh, for the first his, week. Maybe oh, for the first come week. On. He can do what he first wants. Week. This story hasn't gone away Anytime soon. No, but it's not, it shouldn't stop him, and it wouldn't stop him from being able to sit and watch the game live. There's nothing stopping him from doing that. Anyway, it's, I just thought that yeah. was in, that one paragraph interested me, Bill. It, For a long, un- it is a long time. He understood he wants to watch as many opposition teams as he can. Well, it's, I would have thought that's pretty mm. tough to do from the other side of the world. Yeah. And guess who else is over there he can go and see in France? Robert Walls. Yes, Wallsy. Wallsy's living there for he a year. Is, so is. they might get together and uh, hook up. No doubt, Bill. Well, anyway, uh, we'll watch all of that with interest. Now, uh, we need to get to a break because next, Bill. Joe! We've got the beautiful Joe Silvani to come and join us live in the Richard Marsland Studios, the Rush Hour. Hey, Willis, yep. we've only been back on air for, what, a week and a half? Yes. We have already had some of the most talented and magnificent women in this studio I know. you would ever stumble across. A- a- and 
I think we've gone to the top, top we've shelf, gone Jim. straight to the top shelf with the beautiful Joe Silvani, who needs no introduction to the Triple M audience. Hello, Joe. Hello, boys. How are you? You are dominating. Oh, it was at the Seven News, you, of course, yep. presenting the weather there and doing a magnificent job while Gian Rooney's on maternity leave. Yes, she's due to have her baby any tick of the clock. I talked to her the other day. She's ready to pop. She's had a gut full. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, a lot seem to go uh, do the weather and then they get pregnant, Joe. Oh, no. I'm well and truly past that. <laughs> No, I said that the uh, the yeah. the pregnancy disease yes. would stop with me. No well, more. You've no done more. your bit. You've yeah. got three, of course, and they are. What about that, Bill? Mate, 16, Jack and Benny and Tom, 13 and 11, and your birthday the other day. Yes. Uh, do you tell people how old you are, or are you one of those ladies that don't like to tell? Oh, no. I Look, I mean, gosh, you can just Google and see that I was born in 1970, so mm. you can just work that out. So... 44. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is he a romantic, Stephen? Yeah. Does he do anything for you? Like, does he prepare a beautiful restaurant for you to go to? Or well, have a look at him. He's got romance <laughs> written all over no. him, hasn't no, he? I sort of knew the Jim. answer to that question before I asked it. <laughs> He's one of us. <laughs> no romance at all. No, I had to um, organise the uh, restaurant myself. Did but that's you? okay. It was lovely. Oh, good. I'm going to oh, get to good. the weather girl thing in a minute. Weather we- presenter. Weather woman. Um, thank weather you. woman, yeah. <laughs> uh, because I want to talk to you about that. But I. Uh, tell me, uh, Stephen Kernahan, the great man, yes, the, the, the president's big, big chip, has said that he wants your husband back at the Blues. How do you feel about that? Oh, well, I would love to see that mm. happen, but Steve's uh, got a contract with GWS. Yes, he has. But let's put that aside for one second. One uh, we're talking about the future. Would that be something that he'd like to do, your hubby, you reckon? Well, I think I would like to see him do it, and our boys would like to see mm. him do it, but um, it's totally up to him. You'd have to ask him that question. Who do the boys barrack for? Carlton. Do they? Yeah. Who do you follow? Carlton. Do you? Yeah. Who did you think I followed? Well, I thought you might have gone to the Giants a little bit. Well, I have a little bit. Yeah. I wouldn't mind some of their uh, oh, some of their players down at Carlton, to oh, be quite yeah. honest. Oh, yeah. They've yeah, got a amazing. very good forward line. Yeah, very good. Actually, yeah. too big. Too good a forward line. Well, yeah. Jeremy Cameron would look very nice in navy, navy blue. Yes. Don't or, you think? Or even a royal blue. No, blue. Uh, no. Another, look, no, with his fair skin, blue uh, blue navy blue. Hey, um, we need to take a break. I want to talk to you next about this amazing job you're doing with Channel 7. Mm. And also take you back with your TV journey too, Joe. Do you mind sticking around? Yes, that's fine. Joe Silvani on the rush hour. Got Joe Silvani in here with us. Now, of course, she's doing the weather in seven uh, at seven and doing a great job. Yep. But well, let's go back to the sale of the century because, Bill, <laughs> let's be honest, that's where we all first fell in love with Joe. Yeah, well, it was before that. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, very good. We used to watch the sale of the century. Oh, that, no did people doubt. ask you about that? Um, the older generation. Yeah. Like the, Bill and I. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How right. did it happen? Oh, okay. Well, there's two. I mean, Eddie claims that he discovered me. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that story. Yes. Um, so I'll tell you that story first. Um, Carlton were playing uh, the Western Bulldogs over at Footscray and it was freezing. And so Eddie was hosting the president's lunch and he asked me to come in and be his guest. Oh. Oh, um, no, hang on. I was with Steve. This oh, was oh, so he was just uh, Menagua. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no. David Leckie was there, yes. who was the head of Channel Nine oh, at yes. that stage, yeah, no and Ernie Sigley. Oh. And uh, anyway, so um, they thought that um, you know maybe I could do Sale of the Century, so they got me in. So there's oh. that. That story. That's, that's, that's the story. one Ed runs but with. The real story. The real story. Yeah, no, no. Well, this is exactly the same. I was at the Brownlow in 1990, oh. wearing my white bodysuit, a oh, skirt, that's... which is like a skirt and shorts combined, yeah. because it was la- it was lounge suit back then. Oh, a lounge suit <laughs> and a bolero. So I was there with Steve and um, and. Ian Johnson apparently discovered uh, me. John, uh, and so Jono yeah. was head of Channel 9 in Melbourne. Well, See? and Bill, we often say that men, especially footballers, are batting a long way out of their division. They are. But Stephen's a pretty good looking boy. He's a good looking boy. <laughs> you still so wake as up good and, a looking as Joe is, do you wake up husband's and not pinch bad yourself? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, no, I think we're both really lucky. I think yeah. we both complement each other well. No doubt no, about no. that. So the weather, before we let you go, going well uh, at seven, do you enjoy that role? I do enjoy that role. It's I haven't done live television before, so it's always been pre-recorded yep. things that I've done. So that's interesting with someone in your ear telling you to mm. wind up really yeah, quickly. Yeah, hurry up. <laughs> and uh, Tim looks after you? And yeah. Pete? Yeah, Tim and Pete are really yeah, good. They're yeah. they're really good. So uh, we're having a lot of fun. So we've got we've got some footy tipping coming up. Uh, are you involved give, in that? Giving your tips? 
Yeah, of course I am. I know my football, Bill. Who wins Collingwood Fremantle? Frio. All oh, right. Uh, Geelong, uh, who else? Who are North playing? Go Essendon? to Geelong. Yeah, North Essendon. Es- oh, mm. do we really care? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. The new president okay, for well, I, three years. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did read that. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Well, for you, North, Thank and I'll you. say to Tim tonight, Essendon, yes. and the Giants in Sydney. Ooh. Sydney. Oh, yeah. Sydney. Hey, yeah. I tell you what, we are as we let you go. Mm. Is blessed in this city, Bill. Oh, we are. Our weather presenters are magnificent. They all are. You've got Gian, of course, and Joe, and then you've got the beautiful Livo, Livo, and Beck Judd. Shit, what you? a towering job I those know. two do as well. So it's we are unbelievably lucky. Exactly, and yeah. all got good arms. Not the tuck shop arms, oh, Jim. Oh, Bill, gee. they got you lovely arms. You had to arms. take it down that path, didn't you? We were oh, going really well. You have, but haven't you, Joe? Well, I've got a shirt on. You can't even see my I arms. I just watch you on the news. Yeah, well, maybe I'm breathing them in or something. Well, breathing <laughs> them in. Hey, Joe, great to see you. Well done with everything, and good luck with your hubby and yes. getting him uh, up and about with the Giants. Thank you. We do this uh, quite a lot, oh. and the, the family gets stuck into it. We love it. It's, of course, what have your kids said? Unusual. Unusual. <laughs> and... I'm going to open the batting. Oh, yes, please. Uh, Frederick is our fourth son. Frederick. Otherwise known as Freddie. Freddie. Uh, he's six, Bill. Six. And he can be naughty. He can. He, I like him because yeah. he's got a bit of spunk I about him. I call him cheeky, but in effect, he is naughty. Naughty. Anyway, long weekend, we're down the coast. I've got the two little ones, one out, because Mrs. B's helping her mate in the cafe. Oh. And, and so, Bill, I'm there on my own with the two of them. And manners, in my experience yes. with kids, close to the hardest thing to establish. It takes a lot of work. It does. So every time I put food in front of them, I pause. Yes, and? And then, if no, I don't hear anything, I say, thank you very much, Dad. Yeah. And they go, well, thank you very much, Dad. Now, George, who's eight, is getting better. Yes. <laughs> to be fair to him, he remembers most of the time. But Freddie, no. woeful. Come on, Fred. Never. Never. So five times in a row while we're down there, Willis, I put food in front of him, pause, <laughs> nothing. nothing. So at the end of the fifth one, I said, mate... How many times? <laughs> I said it's not that hard. Not hard. When someone makes you food and places it in front of you, you say thank you very much. Thank you. Bill, this is a six-year-old. Right. He looks at me and says with the straightest face <laughs> the following sentence. What do you say? Why do I need to say it when you say it every time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that's clever. Bill. That's clever, Jim. Right. And then George looks at me to see my reaction because yeah, he knows he's, he's being naughty. Naughty. And I don't want to laugh, no. but it's very good. So I do start. I said to turn, oh, I did just turn away, Bill. <laughs> turn the other way. Yeah, and Bill, how do you argue with that logic? No, you can't. Well, stop. You've got to stop saying it. Well, I know. But then if he doesn't say it, nothing happens. <laughs> and take his food away. I'm yeah. telling you now. Yeah. Naughty. Too good. So, Bill, that's an example of what your kids have said. Plenty of them out there, Jim. Unusual. Unusual. That's right. Ring right. now, one triple three five three. Yeah, you know the deal with this one. We do it a lot. What have your kids said? Unusual. We take your calls next. When your kids are sort of between, say, two and eight, mm. that's the window normally, that Bill, normally where they blurt is. stuff out that's often embarrassing. And very humorous. Yeah, like young Maxie, who's actually yes, nine, right. so he's gone over it. But the other day, he was sitting around, he said, when I grow up, when I get all my money from playing golf, <laughs> so he thinks oh, he's going to make a bit Adam out of Scott. golf, there Yeah, I'm going to buy a king-size bed, a sausage dog, and a dartboard. A sausage dog? Yeah, he wants a sausage do- dog, a king-size bed, and a dartboard. Oh, that's it. Well, that's strange. He'll have I just left over. Very random type no, of message. I like uh, it, though. Message. I like it. Maddie's on the line. Hey, Maddie. Maddie. No, no, we've got, uh, yeah, sorry. You're right. we got Maddie. Hello, Maddie. How are you? Good. Yourself? Uh, funny Very things good. the uh, kids have said? Yeah, we were having a bit of a family working bee building my sister in law's new deck, and we had the nails and the hammers out. My three year old helping us with all the nails and the hammers and drills and everything. And my sister in law says to him, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he just looked at her and said, big. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's it. What else do you want to be when you're three? I don't know. How uh, big's the uh, deck, Manny? Um, oh, it's big enough for an entertainment table and stuff like that. So it wasn't overly huge, but yeah. Don't answer him, Matty. You've done a beautiful job talking to us. Thank you for that. Uh, Stay on the line. Davey's in Greensboro. Dave? Yeah, g'day, guys. Um, I was up at uh, the father-in-law's farm and uh, my my brother-in-law's little boy's four. Hmm. We were swimming down the creek and he said, chuck me in, Dad. And my father-in-law, my brother-in-law said, no, no, no. If you climb that tree that goes out over the water, 
and you get up the top and then jump in, you'll do a big bomb. And he turned around to him and says, you're an idiot. <laughs> Four-year-old. You're an idiot. Four-year-old. <laughs> Branded him an idiot, Bill. Yeah. Well, that's probably a fair call after what he just told <laughs> him to do. <laughs> uh, Kimmy's there. Safety first. Yes, I am. Hello, Kimmy. Hi, how are you? Good. Funny things that's your good. kids said? Yes, my son, who is nine, um, I asked him to empty our recycle bin to the outdoor rubbish bin, and he turned around and said to me, well, how much are you going to pay me? (laughs) And I said, nothing, you'll do it because you love me. Um, And then about five minutes later, he came out to the kitchen with his hair waxed and said, oh, would you mind doing my hair for school? And I said, oh, I would, but how much are you going to pay me? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he looked at me in disgust and stormed off and did his hair himself for school. Isn't that just the way? How yeah. much are you going to pay? How much? Yeah. How much? Well, yeah. Everyone's uh, in it for an earn these days. The, the palm greased. Mm. Stay on the line, Kim. Graham's in Cranbourne. Hello, Graham. G'day, John. How are you, How kids, going, Billy? Kids G'day, said Billy. unusual, uh, Graham. Hey, John. Yeah, mate. Yeah, we were out. Um, my daughter and uh, son and the wife and I have been watching TV when the drink and drive ads had been on. Yes. Yep. And we decided to go out and buy a car on the weekend. So we packed a um, some few sangers and a thermos yes. of coffee. And uh, we had a look at some cars. And anyway, the wife poured out a, a cup of coffee for me. And I'm having a sip while I'm driving along. And next minute from the back, back seat, my daughter sings out, Dad, you're a bloody idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And she goes, don't you know you shouldn't drink and drive? Yeah, that's it. Good honour. <laughs> what did you say, uh, Grammy? I, I just turned around, mate. She was only five at the time, and I just turned around and said, to her, yeah, you're right, darling. Dad shouldn't drink and drive. <laughs> uh, well done. Stay on the line, Graham. Did you just brand him like Grammy LaVroy? I think yeah. he did. <laughs> Well, all these other teammates have got long and complicated <laughs> okay, names. names. Why shouldn't he have one? <laughs> Martin's on Gravy. the line from Altona. Hello, Martin. How are you, James? Billy? Yeah, good hey, to speak Marty. to you, mate. What have your good, kids said good. unusual? Uh, the young fella came home from school and said uh, he didn't want to be Australian anymore. Oh. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be interesting. And I uh, said, what's the, what's the go, Ben? And he said, uh, I want to be vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. telling uh, how did you come to that? waffling away and I, after I explained to him that uh, Big Macs and meat pies were off the menu, yeah. uh, he'd give it away. He wanted to be Aussie again. Uh, there would be many yes. Rush Hour family members Ooh. who would claim that being a vegetarian mm. is an un-Australian way to behave. Yeah. We don't agree with that necessarily, but stay on the line, yes, Martin. we do. That's true. Bloody Stuart's in do. Beaconsfield, Willis. Hello, Stewie. Good, uh, good, James. How you going? good, mate. Good champ. What do you got for us? Uh, time for the girls and um, walk in there and my three-year-old says, uh, Daddy, are we having a shower? I said, no, we're having a bath. And she says, but Daddy, the weatherman says showers. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you like That's it? it? I That's like it. that one. Well done. Uh, literal interpretation, mm, Bill. Literal. Uh, yes. Uh, so on the line, Stewie, and Lena finally is in Torquay, Willis. Ah, your part of Lena. Hello, hello. Uh, my story is uh, we were having a party and my little four-year-old granddaughter uh, came up to me with a very stern look on her face and pointing her finger at my boobs, she said, did you really feed my dad with those? <laughs> <laughs> What's dad been telling her? Oh, no, no. Just that she's seen her mum uh, breastfeed her little baby brother. So oh, right. she, she knows that her dad is my son, so she... <laughs> Just trying to work it out. <laughs> oh, I like that, Bill. Oh, yes, very good. And, Actually, and you need to think on your feet with your answer. Yes, exactly. All right, a hundred dollar uh, voucher for fuel from Coles. Shell Coles. Shell, yeah, Shell Coles. Shell yes. Coles. Uh, we're going with David Greensboro, oh. who uh, he said to his uh, grandfather, I think it was, "You're an idiot." Grandfather. Grandfather. grandfather? He said, <laughs> "You are an idiot." I think so, he's dropped off the line. Oh no, there he is, David. Oh, no. oh, where is Dave? he? No, I don't, I don't know where he's I'll going. ring us back, Dave. You've got $100. ring us back, Dave. $100 voucher for you. Thanks to everyone uh, hey, calling. good ones there, Jim. Oh, they're always good, Bill. The family like love it. it. This morning on the hot breakfast, the boys, Eddie, Darcy and Mick, uh, they spoke with Brad Hodge and Davey oh, Warner, yeah. who were on the team oh, bus yeah. after their great five-wicket win last night. Have a listen to this. He's on the team bus now. Uh, Hodge, congratulations. Man of the match. Well done. Thanks, Luke. Thank you very much. Tell us about the, the, those last few balls, though. Uh, the, the first six that you, you did, you hit it right out of the screws, and the South Africans were pretty. They're up on their toes after Duplessis took the uh, the catch just beforehand. It looked like they just were one more dot ball away from winning that game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's um, look. I, I suppose that's that's why I'm there. I guess to try and keep that cool head and just keep a level head and. Um, See if I can get a few in the middle and get it home. But you know, I mean, sometimes it works for you and sometimes it doesn't. But 
Yeah, they had the momentum once uh, Warner went out. He was on fire. And uh, in seven overs, I mean, you know, I mean, you can go either way. And uh, I was just hopefully, you know, just wanted to hit two boundaries in the over, and I thought if I can hit two, then we'll win the game. So that was the that was the thought process. And luckily, you know, I hit most of the bat, and I went over the fence. Hey, Hodgie, mate, you're magnificent. Hey, is Warner nearby? Davey, yeah. he was heckling me. He's right at the back of the bar. Mate, give, <laughs> chuck him the phone for a second. We want to get into him. Hello, mate. How are you? Hey, yeah. congratulations. The 40 was magnificent. How did you not get man of the match? Uh, no, the old fella got us across the line, mate. <laughs> he did two sixes to, to win the game. So he thoroughly deserved it, I thought. Yeah, congratulations. You're going to be a father. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's um, a little bit uh, surreal. It'll probably hit me when the, the thing pops out and um, starts crying. So uh, <laughs> no, I'm, ready. I'm, I'm mate, ready for it and I'm looking forward to the well, challenge. What did you think of the seven over routine there? Jeez, it was fast and furious. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, we saw something before when India played here in 2020. They covered the whole outfield full of sawdust, and, and that's what they did today. The, uh, the super stopper uh, ran out of petrol, I think, so they couldn't uh, get it back out there. But you know, it's just good for us to get out there and have a hit. Um, you know, the guys have been a, you know, a bit bored in the change of sitting around waiting for the rain to stop, but it's good to get out there and, and have another win, obviously, as well. Congratulations on the win. Cricket is on fire at the moment, and you're a major reason why. And good luck to you and Candice as well. Thanks, gents. Have a good day. Oh, there you go. Good Fantastic get. get for the guys this morning. What, what about buzz? passing the phone around? Uh, well done, boys. Yeah, that was very, very good. good. All right, Bernie Vince to join us next from Melbourne. Looking forward to chatting to the great Bernard. The Rush Hour. Want to help keep the Premiership Cup in Melbourne? Show your support and travel with Metro Trains to every game. It's a grand old flag. It's a high-flying flag. Bernie Vince did well. Did incredibly well. Vince from downtown. Bernard. Blue. Oh, and oh, nicely too, ruzi has got them up and about. Nice snabs challenge series. <laughs> and some new names, Willis. Yes. Including our man, Bernard Vince. Yeah. One of the superstars of the Adelaide Crows. Uh, best and fairest winner, of course. And now he's over playing for Melbourne. Hello, Bernard. G'day, guys. How are you going? Oh, good. How are you, mate? Welcome to Melbourne. How are you enjoying the city of Melbourne, first of all? I'm loving it, Bill. Uh, I did obviously didn't know what to think when I come over here. I've only uh, been over on weekends playing footy and uh, some... Uh, in famous grand final weeks, yes. um, spent with a few of you boys sometimes, mm. but um, gold yeah, fingers. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I won't go into that. But, <laughs> um, no, I've loved it. It's um, I spent my first uh, three months with Chris Dawes, and yes. he uh, showed me around. He's obviously a Melbourne boy, and um, yeah, showed me all the nice places to eat and. Nice coffee places, and coffee. everyone seems to go out for coffees. Well, and this cafes is what, everywhere. This here. is what your life's become, Bernard, because you are loved up. This yeah. is a recent phenomenon. You've yeah. obviously been um, mm, prior to that a man geez. who's enjoyed just having a look around, Bill. Freedom, but uh, now <laughs> you're a very committed man. Is this true? Yeah, it is true, mate. It is. Uh, mm. I've, I've heard uh, Tex has been into me a fair bit about this in Adelaide, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I can I can share a bit of dirt on him actually. Maybe <laughs> over here he might not hear it, but um, yeah, no, I certainly loved up now. Yep. And oh. how long has this been happening? Um, it's been a while now. Um, probably about a year. Uh, I'd say I don't really keep dates, but I'd getting have to ask serious. Her. Yeah, 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 no, she's over in What's Melbourne What's her name, now, so. please, uh, Bernard? Abby. So, Abby, and she's yeah. an Adelaide girl? Uh, she's, yeah, from Berry in uh, in the oh. Riverland, so, uh, yeah, things are things are going smoothly. Well, and it's my understanding that in your absence, <laughs> uh, the House of Tex, yeah. uh, which used to have a revolving door out yeah. the front, Bill, and they just came in and out, has been very quiet, is yeah. that true? I've heard it has been a little bit quieter, but yeah. um, well, Brad Crouch has moved in, so that Ooh. he would be no help whatsoever. <laughs> He's uh, he's hopeless with the ladies. So, um. and, and a couple of those weeks, those grand final weeks, we loved your form, Bernard. It was extraordinary, um, especially the time when you stole uh, Damo's glasses oh. and basically wouldn't give him back to him. And Damo was blind at the yeah. precinct. Like, he oh, yeah. cannot see without his glasses on, and you were walking around. <laughs> That's a funny story. Running into people, he had a bit of stage fright. I was standing next to him at the urinal, and I thought, <laughs> "What can I do here to loosen things up a bit?" So I just took his <laughs> took his glasses, and he didn't come out for another about twenty he minutes. He so came I'd, out with Bill. I saw him in the toilet. He goes, Bill, you got to help me. you got to help me. And he's, he couldn't hardly see me. He's touching, you know, touching around the toilet. Uh, he, oh, Bernie, Bernie, bitch, just take me glasses. you got to get them. you got to get them. I thought he'd fallen over in there. I was waiting for him to come out and saying, boys, wait for this. But then he didn't come out. <laughs> he, he was. He was devastated. Yeah. Hey, I heard the text walker rang you, right? He rang you and he said, now, Bernard. <laughs> 
which tap is the hot and which tap is the cold? Is that true or not? <laughs> that, can't <be. laughs> that can't be true. Nah, it was uh, wasn't quite as uh, sophisticated as that. He uh, it was looking for the power box, the meter box, and uh, I said, try on the side of the house, mate. He was looking in the roof. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's lost without his man here. He he is. Is lost. Well, and I couldn't believe I, I said to. Um, Rory Sloan the other day that I drifted out the back at the test match <laughs> to catch up with you boys who were all having a little sip and of course I was working so I was unable to but just a 15 minute chat and um, there was no stock anywhere near any of you <laughs> and the claim was that Tex was driving them away <laughs> it was just true banana <laughs> well you just got to take one look at him and you <laughs> But uh, no, we were having a good day. It was good to catch up with a few of the boys. That was only a few weeks after I started over here. So, mm. and how does it good go? Because back. you leave, you, you, you were great, very uh, popular, very popular, much loved by Adelaide, not only the club but also the supporters and everyone. Mm. So, how do you go now at a different club? Yeah, um, obviously the decision when I when I first made it was a tough one and um, took me a little bit to get over it. But um, yeah, now I'm now I'm at a new club and new city. It's all. All been uh, sort of refreshing, I guess. It's been, I feel like a, a young draftee again. I'm the fourth oldest at the Melbourne Footy Club, so it goes to show like we've got a pretty young list and pretty exciting uh, young talent. So I'm excited about the opportunity now. And, um, you know, I'm still great mates with all those blokes. I speak to them all the time. And um, as you said, Tex rings up and asks what <laughs> tap to turn on and, <laughs> and things like that, which always is quite humorous, but um, yeah, I still am really good mates with them and catch up whenever I'm back and, and same when they're over here. All right, need to talk to you about Melbourne yes. and what's happening down there. Things just uh, starting to settle in. It's good, so that's coming up next. Bernard Vince from the Melbourne Demons. And Bernard, you're a pretty laid back unit, so I imagine that Rusey's style would suit you. Yeah, it has. He's been awesome. Um, I actually, before I got drafted, I went and trained with Sydney for a few days, so met him pretty early on in my AFL career, but um, to get the chance to play under him has been, been awesome, and I was just saying uh, about the, the night I was late to the game, he you know, he just was so laid back about it, and you know, other coaches in the past I've had would probably... <laughs> uh, get a little bit more excited than that but he uh you know he's pretty calm and collected and I think that's you know rubbing off in the group um a lot as well with just his laid back sort of attitude and um gets the best out he's a really good people person gets the best out of mm. gets the best out of people hey were well, you going to go to Sydney where no, I, no, this is before I got drafted uh, back in uh, oh, five. The, yeah oh, so right, sorry. I didn't do draft camp or anything so they wanted to Tell me a couple of players I want to know about. Jesse Hogan, we've heard a lot about him. Haven't seen a lot of him play. A couple of games, then he hurt himself against the Cats. Uh, he looks like he's going to be a very, very good player. Yeah, I heard a lot about him uh, before I came over. So, um, And he yeah, he's certainly uh, lived up to that during... Uh, during pre-season training and stuff, he's been been mm. awesome, crashing in, and he's you know he's only played against Geelong. That um, you know just his aggressiveness, taking grabs and slamming into blokes, and just a bit of mongrel about him, which yeah. I, I like in a big mm. forward. And um, you know he's uh, had that little setback with his back, but I think they're taking a pretty cautious approach with him. Seeing we uh, we've got a few of our other big guys uh, yeah. out at the moment. Where's Mitch Clark? Because he can play also. Yeah, he's an absolute gun, Mitch Clark, and I feel for him. Um, so much because he, uh, you know, he's he's doing everything he can to get back. Had yeah. some complications with his foot, um, missed a lot of footy, came back and had some more complications with it, I think, as well. But Gee. when you miss that much uh, footy, other things happen when you come back to full training. So they eased him back into it, but he's had, you know, little hamstring troubles and a little calf at the moment. So um, he's uh, probably realistically not going to be right till, you know, round four mm. or five or something like that. But when we get him back, it's going to be a huge lift because all the boys love him. Yeah. Right. Hey, Bill. Yes. Uh, Burn, obviously, a very popular man. And when he gets on the air, people want a piece of him, of That's course. Right. We had lots yes. of people ringing, but... One call has managed to make his way through here. Who have we got on the line? Hello, this is the Rush Hour. Hello there, boys. How uh, are we? Who, who is this? <laughs> this is a big Texan. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Texan. Oh, oh, Tex. We've got Burn in here. Did you hear what he said about you before? <laughs> I did. I was actually turned in and uh, I did hear him give me a spray about the power box. That is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> did you ring uh, Bernard and ask him which tap is the hot one and which tap is the cold one? Well, I think all you boys um, would, would understand what Bernie's like. He, uh, he gets a few pimples on that tongue. He does like to <laughs> string a couple of lives together. <laughs> and I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what, though. I did have one of the boys come over for tea the other night, and they said, Jesus, Tex, he, uh, the, the garden is looking the best it's ever had. I said, you know why? It's because I'm in charge. Uh, <laughs> the garden. But apparently there's no one coming through the door anymore like they used to. 
No, no, I uh, I'll fix that. I'll put a profit right in. Have to have a, I don't have to have a revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> did you know where the meter box was, Tex? I did, mate, on the side of the house. But I did have to ring Bernie, though, to ask him about the sprinkler system that um, was a bit old, and he told me to have a look on the roof to see where the <laughs> was. Yeah, so. that's made up. That is made up. How you going, Tex? Anyway, you missing your old mate? I am, mate. Missing him a bit. Um, looking, trying to get over there for a weekend soon, so... Um, he just moved into a new house, and he, I, I told him he had to get a spare room f- so that when I come over, I can uh, come and join. Oh, I got him. one. Got one for him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's loved I'm up. He's cold, it's a single bed, too. He's, in there. <laughs> he's loved up, Tex. I oh, know he is. I'm, uh, I'm, he's been sending me photos of like, wedding careful, invites. Careful, careful. <laughs> Jeweler shop, so he's, uh, it's getting very serious. Hey, uh, Texan, when are we seeing you play football, please? <laughs> Oh, well, you'll see me play a little bit in 2014, but um, not not 100% sure as to when I'll be back yet. Um, I've got to I've got to tick another couple of boxes before I'm full competitive, and uh, once we do that, we'll have a solid four to six weeks of training, and then uh, I'll be ready to go. Oh, All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for ringing in and keeping Bernie honest. No worries. Thanks for uh, having me, and uh, look after my brother over there. We will, mate. We he's loving Melbourne too. Yeah, he, he tells me he loves, loves coming into Triple M seeing you boys. Uh, good on you, Tex. Well done, Tex. Uh, there is a superstar, uh, he Tex is. Walker. And we need him playing. He is. It's too good we a player do. not to be out there. Oh, I think it's uh, everyone in the football world uh, would love to see him back playing because he's just, uh, you know, he's got a – it's not just his football ability, it's his uh, off-field stuff as well. I think he's just the – I guess his um, presence around mm. the place in the football world. So I mm. uh, can't wait to get him back and um, get him back playing and watching him on TV. How many members do you reckon Mel? Have got. Let's see how good he is oh, with the. Uh, with how you. many mel- Actually, uh, members? I, I did a ring around the other night, Bill. Oh, we, good boy. Uh, we rang some members uh, yeah. that um, hadn't renewed yet. And good. I actually, I think I was second in the list for signing them up. So oh, well I signed done. up about fifteen in about half an hour. Good boy. How many in total do you reckon at the oh, minute? I reckon probably just uh, just over thirty thousand. Yeah. I'm going to go about thirty thousand and eight. Oh, spot on. Good Steve. work, Bill. Yeah, yes. How do you join the club, please? Yes. How do you do that, Bernard? Yep, so you go uh, to our website, www.melbournefc.com.au and uh, click on the membership link. Beautiful. Well done. Uh, See, he's uh, all about it. And uh, tonight, Christian Salem on uh, the footy show. And I think Jesse Hogan's coming on too. So I think both big uh, young stars for the D's are on tonight chatting to Gaz. Yeah, two future stars. Now, is it Christian Salem or is it uh, Jesse Hogan who's wearing number three? Uh, Salem. Yeah, Salem's wearing number three, Bill, because apparently he loved Clint Bizzle. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Gaz thought it was all about him. him, He would have, exactly. I'll tell you what, he'd match him for hair. He has got hair everywhere. Who? Christian Salem. What, his hair is Hairiest man alive. He's 18 and he's hairy. I want to get their shirts off and have a look. (laughs) We might have a uh, hair off. A hair off, yeah. Well, after when we finish here, you can tell us a bit about those two boys so Mm. we can lay some down on them when we get there. I'll let you know. Uh, Uh, Melbourne Footy Club launch tomorrow night, Jim. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Well, good luck. It's just starting to turn and get some sizzle back into one of the great clubs in the AFL. So good luck this year, Ben. Cheers. Thanks very much, boys. Bill, before yep. you get stuck into what you're about to do, <laughs> nice yes. to see Bernie Vince yes. and the Nina and Pasadena pack, Sushi oh. uh, Radio. Oh. Uh, he's taken that home beautifully done. And a very, very a cool young man, and I wish him well at the Melbourne Footy Club. Cool. I thought Pete. you were going to ask Bill about that word that he was... Yeah, what word were you trying to say, Bill? Because you've been asked to do something here within the building, and your question was, is there any... Uh, money. Um, now, Jim. It and, wasn't money, Bill. It wasn't money, hey, Bill. good T-shirts. I've been wearing around oh, those yeah. Nina Kiss and Pasadena. Chasing. And don't I look cool in them, Jim? No. <laughs> Not as cool as Bernie, no. <laughs> exactly. Now, we need, Jim, we yes. need the Rush Hour's help. Right. The, the family. Yes. So we need the family to get together here, and mm-hmm. we help one another. Come on, then. It's a take and give here. And we're, it's I a, beg your pardon? It's give and take, take and give, <laughs> Write that down and we need it. a team effort from everyone, the Rush Hour family, the listeners. Now, I drive across the Westgate Bridge every day. I can't right? keep up with him. The Westgate Bridge, not yes. the Baldy Bridge, Jill. Uh, the Westgate Bridge every day, and for the last week or so, I've noticed a green and white flag flying on the Westgate Bridge. And I, I had callers w- during the week about this, and I don't know what it is, Bill. Well, I would like to know what it is, and we've got it up on our Facebook page, and you can like our Facebook page. Which it's, is the first thing you should do. Yeah, Triple M, Rush Hour Facebook page. You like it. And then if you've got any questions out there, this is the Rush Hour family, mm-hmm. if they've got any questions they need some help with, like, Jim, Where the conduit, Bill? 
What? We're the conduit. <laughs> We're the in-betweeners. We help you out. So if there's a st- That's what a conduit is, Bill. Oh, if there's a statue or something you see mm-hmm. going up, That's you it. want to know. Like that motel when you travelled down yes, to the East Link. the East Link. And there's a little motel Tiny there. little motel. That Which, Duke thought was real. <laughs> yeah, Jim thought little no, Duke. No, I didn't. Oh, I knew it wasn't. He can't Luke Darcy thought it was that. real. It's bloody tiny. Duke did. Yeah, he thought it was real. For little people. And then there's yeah. the bird eating the chip on the other side. Exactly. And the ram's head on the newie. They're landmarks, Jim. Well, well, what's the motel then? Uh, a landmark. <laughs> so if you break down it's and you a, have to ring someone. It's not an art installation or anything like that, is it, Bill? Oh, yeah, it's a, a bit sculpture. of that. A bit of sculpture, but it's a landmark. <laughs> See, this is where I need the help from the Rush Hour listeners. I need someone else. But this is what we're on about. So you go right. to the uh, like the Triple M Rush Hour Facebook page and you can ask any question and we will answer it. Like the flag on the West Coast. Exactly. And well, who, who put know? this picture up? Who put the picture up on the Facebook page? Because it says, Bill saw this flag flying on top of the Balti Bridge. Oh, Bill. Anyone know what it know is? It's the West Coast. I didn't idiot. write the writing. I got the photo I and didn't Jill write the writing, <laughs> and Jill did the writing. Right, did she? Yes, and uh, she stuffed it up. <laughs> Where do you get a good producer? Fair income. Um, so we so, should do this segment more often. Know, it's going it's the Westgate flag. Yes. It's, it's a funny looking green and white one, and I right. want to know what it is, please. Right-o. So people get on, like the Facebook page, and then give you your answer. Yeah. Or if they want, they can ring us on one triple three five three. Even, See, Bill. And pe- you know what people are saying already on Facebook? What are they saying on Facebook? Looks like the Westgate Bridge, Bill. <laughs> Baldy Bridge, eh, Bill? <laughs> Jake's written, write that down, Hig. Oh, <laughs> See, I don't even say Bill, it. No, you I... idiot. <laughs> Honestly, you couldn't stuff this up anymore. You don't even know what bloody bridge I know on. what bridge it is. <laughs> I go across the bridge every day. I'm not sure you know. Westgate Bridge, bridge, eh? <laughs> Dopey, it's not the uh, not the Baldy. I'll get stuffed. I didn't say it. <laughs> anyway, can, you can please send me and tell me what the green and white flag is on the Westgate oh, Bridge. Oh, Chris has told us what it is. What is it? What is well, it? Chris please? has put a picture of the actual flag up mm-hmm. in the post. On the Westgate, not the Baldy. The Westgate. Oh, it's called the Westgate flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Westgate bloody flag. He says it's been put there by the National Gallery of Victoria for the last weeks of the Melbourne Now thing. I don't really understand the meaning of the design, though. Oh, see, Chris doesn't know. It's called the West Coast. Uh, we got some. Oh, we got some callers, have we? Yeah, Jill? Uh, no, Jill's <laughs> recovering from the burst you What's gave. What's old Baldy doing out there? <laughs> Should we take these callers no, and they'll tell us? I don't think so, Bill. I think we need to take a break. Who are they for? Old Mel McLaughlin. <laughs> Mel, got to Look come into Mel. this. Mel was one of the sharpest hosts on Australian television. She's walked into this well, radio. That's two of us. Oh. <laughs> oh, please. Two of us, Jim. Oh, no. There it is. We're, on the Westgate. We're, we're putting that up for an award. Though. I think so. A <laughs> couple of minutes. It's the Westgate flag, Bill. Oh, piss off. <laughs> Special guest Mel McLaughlin, minutes away. But yeah. before we do, Bills, yes, I don't know what he's launched. To I'm be honest, sure it's some happened. sort of helpline. Helpline, rush hour. Where you get on Facebook, like it for a start, yep. and then put a question you want answered, or answer a question that's on there. It's pretty simple. And a link in this great city. But Jim. Bill just forgot which bridge he was on. Yeah, and oh, yeah. posted a, a photo of something that was actually flying on the Westgate <laughs> that he thought was on the Balti. Yeah, so he it. cocked it up from the start. Mm. Anyway, Linda's on the line from Pakenham. Hey, Linda. Hi, how you going, So Debbie? this um, flag that is actually on the west gate, west gate. sort of a yeah. light greeny and white-looking chap, what is yeah. it? Yep. Um, well, if you don't ask the lovely Joe Bailey earlier, she reported on the news on Tuesday night that it's part of that Melbourne Now event, which I have no idea what that is, but it's obviously to do with art because um, some Melbourne designers or artists, they designed it, and it's going to be up till the 25th of March. Well, there you are, Bill. Well, Simple so, as that. Is that all it is? Yeah, so you'll die a happy guy now. Thank you, Linda. So it wasn't that hard, Bill. <laughs> I could have designed that. <laughs> He's the artist. Fair income. Well, anyway, thank you, Linda. Yeah, and Hig, that. we do need to yeah. straighten up. Look, yeah, touch. you guys have just got to, uh, as he walks into the studio mm. now, it is great to have our next guest in here. Hey, yes, Higo, it is our very great pleasure oh. to have Mel McLaughlin oh. in studio with us. This Crikey. woman, uh, uh, Bill, Glamour has host. taken... <laughs> Television by storm in this country. Oh, well, Jim, don't worry about that. Glamour host, I used to watch the soccer, and I'm not a big soccer fan, no. but I'd just wait for half time or <laughs> kick off. I used to watch religiously watch a show called Kick Off, Jim, because this girl here, Melanie McLaughlin, was the I uh, was the host there, and now of course come across to Channel Ten. Absolutely. <laughs> and how good was the cricket, Brilliant. Mel? Brilliant, Mel. Welcome. Um. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're fans. We are. And everyone's a fan. Now, you, that must feel good. Yeah. Feeling pretty good because, right now. Because trust me, Mel, not everyone's a fan of everyone <laughs> no. on television, as Bill and I can attest. Oh, exactly. Uh, but it's, it's been a really good move for you. Over to 10, the Big Bash was great. It's, it sure was, and, and thank you for mentioning the football or soccer. I don't know what you guys call it here. I, I have missed it terribly, but I'm having an absolute ball. It's been just to, you know, try a few things. I do, like, I'm a sports fan in general, but the Big Bash was something else, working with those boys, and, you know, it's a, it is a great sports team at 10. It was a lot of fun. It was too much fun. And um, then Russia and now Formula yeah. One, and I really don't have a drinking habit to cope with everything. Well, we, it was a too blokey when you did the Big Bash because, of course, we all know Punter and oh. Gilly and uh, Flam and the boys, uh, they can. Vivian. Well, the great Sir Vivian, of course, in a whole category of his <laughs> Let's own. Let's all show some respect for Sir Viv. All no, right. no doubt Sir about Viv. it. Tunda. But uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, it, it is a very blokey environment. How did you go with it? Um, honestly, well, I, I knew Flem and, and Mark Wall from before, mm. um, from Fox, but... You know, they're gentlemen. Ricky's a really nice guy. Gilly's just the world's nicest. Mm, I, it sounds like I'm all gushy. It's you all are. It's lame. I should have something negative to say. But And then Saviv and, you know, Mark Howard, how he yep. say hi. We, we'd both, Andy Ma. We, uh, who could forget? Ma. We love Andy Ma. He's a nerd. But mm. Howie and I stood there at the gavel one day, both of us equally swooning over Saviv, and that's yeah. the measure of the man. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the guy, I didn't find it too blokey. I, well, you know. My work life for years and yeah. years and years yeah, has been right. bloke. So yeah, you're used to it. Look, it's been worse. She did a great job hosting the Winter yes. Olympics, and that's not easy to do. I know this personally, Mel, because I was involved in the last Winter Olympics. I loved it, by the way. I thought it was one of the great things I've ever been to, the Winter Olympics. It was cool and the gang. Did you find it like that? So tr- cool and the gang. That is the mm. best way to put it. <laughs> it was uh, very different because of the whole Russian experience. Yeah. You know, they did an amazing job. Olympic uh, Park was beautiful and the way they set it all up it all as chumpy pullen said mm. it's called cool, you know people said there were going to be all these problems but he called it the convenient games because it's true to get up the mountain it didn't it was 40 minutes to yep. get up there and that's when you felt you were part of it and that's where the goosebumps came and you know getting to go up and and see Tora in that mm. half pipe final um the ski cross different things once you go up there you go wow we're lucky and the ice hockey and they're and pretty and cruisy too winter just, athletes aren't they well, they're not as sort of head up their bum yeah and the three of us we would have dealt with with a lot of different kinds of athletes over the years. But obviously they don't get a lot of publicity, most of them anyway. Yep. They're crazy what they do to their bodies. Mm. And we talk about footy plays of all the different codes and what they do, what they come back mm. from. And I'm sure you saw that too. Oh, yeah. That's what you're in awe of. Mm. For Aussies that go, why do I care? Well, because we're sports fans and we see what these guys mm. do. It's uh, the girls and no, no ACLs. I borrowed no, exactly. dad's, yeah. dad's hammy or whatever. Yeah. I busted that too, but <laughs> I'm still going to jump. Yeah. Why not? Have their shoulder separated and yet <laughs> yeah. get up and That's do it cool. again. That's it's, cool. Uh, it is cool. And, I, and that was really good. You did a great job with that. Uh, Bill. Thanks. Now tomorrow. Ooh. The F1. Well, come on. Are you a, a rev head? Uh, I don't know. Formula One, yes. I grew up on that as well, like right. sporting sort of family, sporting dad. Um, so lo- have loved watching it. Um, wouldn't say, mm. you know, if we're getting into your V8 variety, you know, your, your different types of cars. And so you're a Ford or Holden? I, li- I like a car with cup holders. Cup holders. <laughs> mm. Jeez, I don't know if they're in the V8s anymore, are they? The <laughs> <laughs> but so, but the t- Channel Ten tomorrow, you're on air. What, yep. You're hosting. Yeah, co- co-hosting. Rusty um, is a host. I'll be. We'll basically he'll be doing some commentary, and then I'll be in there. We'll be doing some interviews. Yep. We'll have Tora and Chumpy on the couch at some point as well. Mark oh. Webber. Well, minor player in yeah. the you know, motorsport right. world. So we're very excited to have him as part of it. Friday will be um, all day on one, and then um, Saturday. Sunday all day on on both. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Good. and you've just been around the track in the AMG Mercedes. How was that? Yeah, I, and um, yeah, I, it was uh, it was pretty awesome. Um, I got sledged a little bit, and ten they stitched me up. They put a little GoPro in there yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. just Good. to really. And they timed me; it wasn't great, no. but but I hit the two twenty mark. Nice, Ooh. yeah. Good. Just Ooh. once, but that's all it took. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> it hey, Mel, you're a star. Well done with everything you're doing, and Thanks, good boys. luck over the weekend yeah. with the F1. Appreciate it. Thanks, boys. How on you, Mel? <laughs> now, Bill. A uh, joke from you. All right, then. Anything funny about it? No. <coughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. How, Jim, me boy, how did the butcher introduce his wife? How? Oh, no. Meet Patty. <laughs> Meet Patty, Jim. <laughs> what? <laughs> Meet Patty. Jim, it's not bad. Bill. It's not bad. No, we're it's going. It's despicable, Bill. Sapling, boom, wah. Sapling, boom, wah, wah, wah. Talk to you tomorrow at 3. 
Triple M's Rush Hour podcast was brought to you by Fox Footy, only on Foxtel.